Hi, I'm Jim from jimthebikeguy.com. I'm here today to talk to you about disc brakes, specifically hydraulic disc brakes, and uh, we're gonna talk about aligning them and fixing any uh, rubbing that you might get. So quite often people have um, a hissing or a rubbing noise coming from their uh, brake caliper. There's normally two or three reasons for that. Um, we're gonna go through that now. Before we carry on, I'm gonna go through uh, some of the tools that you're gonna need to do this job. So first and foremost, this is a disc brake tool. They're really cheap. I would suggest if you have a disc brake bike, grab yourself one of these. So basically it's got two ends usually. So you've got this spade shaped part at this end and that is for uh, pushing your pads apart, pushing the pistons back into the caliper, which you'll see me do in a little while. And then on the other end, we have a rotor truing tool uh, so basically it looks a bit like a tuning fork to all intents and purposes and you can see this one's got three different slots depending on the angle you come to the rotor and you will see me doing that later on in the video. These are readily available, they are a brilliant idea if you've got a disc brake bike. Going on from there, you're going to also need, let's have a bit of a look, so this is a 4mm Allen key or hex key, as you might call it in America. It's got a ball end and it's got a flat end. Ideally, any Allen keys or hex keys that you might buy should have a ball end and a flat end. So that's a four. Same in a uh, five. And then the only other thing you might need is a Torx uh, key. So Torx is this star-shaped end there. And the reason you might need one of these is because a SRAM, for example, when they mount their calipers onto the uh, bike, they use Torx instead of um, hex bolts. So have a look at the bolts that are secure in the caliper. Another really important thing before we carry on, it's really important to identify which bolts are the ones that are holding the caliper, that's the caliper there, onto the frame and which bolts are holding the two halves of the caliper together. The latter ones, the ones that are holding the caliper together, they're the ones I do not want you to undo under any circumstances. It's really important, unless you want a large puddle of oil um, and a bill from your local bike mechanic. So the reasons why uh, you might be getting that really annoying noise if you like, and um, that you can hear, or ding, 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 or something like that as you're going down the road, is because either this caliper is not aligned to this rotor. So that is to say, if these are your brake pads, and this is your rotor, it kind of wants to look like that. So you've got equal daylight left and right. So the first problem normally is actually the caliper's somewhere over here, so the rotor is doing that thing that you can see me doing there. The next problem might be, even though the caliper is correctly aligned, one or the other of the brake pads isn't going home again. So when you press the brake lever, the pads come to the rotor. When you let go of the brake lever, via a kind of hydraulic siphon action, the pads go back to their houses again. But sometimes one of them just refuses to go home. And that's quite often what we call a sticky piston, and we can do something about that to a degree. The third reason, the rotor itself might be bent. So if you've got a bent rotor, what actually happens is the whole thing appears to be in line, but as the rotor starts passing through the caliper, it's doing this, it's got a wave in it. So at some point in its circumference, so you can see it kind of looks like a CD, if anybody remembers what they are, um, at some point around here, it's actually got like a crinkle in it, like that. I'm sort of demonstrating it as best as I can with my fingers. So as it's passing through the caliper, it's twanging on one of the pads. Okay, let's tackle those things in order. The first thing to do before we get into um, caliper realignment, or before we get into um, rotor truing, 
if you like, um, is push your brake pads back home because that creates a datum point almost. It does a reset, if you like, it gives you something to work to. Because the risk is if you don't um, push your calipers back, um, as I mentioned earlier, one of them hasn't gone home properly and one of them's over here somewhere, you're trying to align a caliper which hasn't been reset and with two pads that are in the wrong position anyway. So it's really important, I would say, that this is your first step before doing the other bits that we're going to do. And for this, you will need this tool here. So we're gonna shove the um, pads apart and we're gonna use this tool to do it. So very carefully, look down through it and you're looking to pop that into the gap there. Don't press it in too hard because there's a risk that if you do, you'll either gouge the surface of your brake pads or um, bend the uh, return spring or alternatively shove the pads straight out through the top and that wouldn't be good. And now um, try and keep the work supported while you're doing it and just gently lever those pads back into place like that. And what that basically does is it sends the pads home, sends the pistons, which is the part behind the pad that comes in and out, sends them home. And another good idea while you're doing this is if you've got some uh, brake disc or brake caliper cleaner, or alternatively some isopropyl alcohol, which is a really good bike cleaning stuff and is available ever so cheap, spray some of that in there now because in the process of you pushing the pistons back and spraying it through with a, a good cleaner, it has the effect of cleaning the pistons as well as you push them back because they have seals around them. And so you'll actually, um, you'll score some brake cleaning for free basically because you'll be pushing those pistons back in and the, the uh, cleaning stuff that you're gonna use will be acting on them as you go. Okay, so we've retracted those pistons quite nicely. We've basically created a bit more daylight in there now. And what we're gonna do next is pop the wheel back in. So I'm going to grab my four like that. If possible, when you undo these bolts, you're gonna have to expect that they're gonna be clamped up fairly tight and they're probably gonna have been sat in situ for some time, which means they're probably gonna have gone a little bit sticky. If you can get the square end of your um, hex key, or Allen key for viewers in the UK, um, to bear on it, that's much better. But you might have to use the ball end because access is quite often tight. So I'm gonna try that now. Yeah, straight away, we can't bring the flat end in without taking the pads out. I don't really wanna take the pads out. So we are gonna pop that four in there like that. Give it a turn, and it was quite a crack. Now when you go to align your caliper, you really don't need to back those bolts out much at all because you're just looking for small amounts of movement and you're not looking for the caliper to be coming away from the frame like that. You really just need it to dance left and right on its mounting point. So I'm literally cracking those two bolts like that, putting on about a quarter of a turn. And you can see, I'm gonna demonstrate this quite carefully with my hands, that caliper now has got enough lateral slide in it, movement, that we can do that alignment process quite happily. The easy win version of this which you should try first um, is quite simply spin the wheel, stick the brake on, keep the brake held and do the bolts back up again. Don't do them over tight at this point because there's not much point because you might have to change it again in a minute anyway. Do that, let go of the brake, spin the wheel. That was pretty much worked first time happy days, because what we're really looking to achieve, the overall aim of this, if you remember me uh, painting that picture with my hands earlier, is we're looking for equal daylight between the rotor and the pads. And a good way of identifying that 
is if you put something bright, that's why I have a light coloured surface, uh, a light coloured floor rather, in my workshops for that very reason, because you can look down through the caliper and admittedly it's very tight. There'll only be maybe half a mil clearance either side in some systems. But if you have a good look down through there and you've got equal daylight left and right, like that, then effectively that's as good as it gets. Give it another spin. I'm going to go quiet for a second while we have a listen. So there's no rub in this particular case. So my easy win method, undo the bolts, put the brake on. And yes, this bike is cabled up Euro. Put the brake on, do the bolts back up with the lever held. Don't let go of it. Test it. Ask yourself if it's all right. If it was all right at that point, grab your Allen key again and do the bolts up now to the correct torque. Even better, grab yourself a torque wrench and do it up to the rating. The next method is if that didn't work. Okay, so let's say you've done the clamp the lever, do the bolts up, get away with it method. It didn't work. You've spun the wheel, still going crazy. Um, you've now got no choice but to do it by hand. So basically the approach is the same. Crack those bolts again. So you notice they didn't make a loud noise this time because they've been undone twice now in the space of five minutes and all of a sudden they're free and happy. So now it's a bit more niggly. So really what you're gonna have to do now is again, undo the bolts to the point where that caliper wants to move. As you can see, I'm giving it a good slide and a wiggle. And the movement really should be against the flat faces of the, um, the mountings, whether they're post mounts or flat mounts or whatever, this is flat mount. And then effectively you have no choice now but to look down against a light surface. So if you need to put a big sheet of white paper on the floor or something like that, do it, it's absolutely fine. And you really are looking to look down through it and you might have to make this crazy face that I'm doing at the minute because you kind of end up, end up having to close one eye to see it. And you've literally got to make microscopic movements of the caliper with your hands, as you can kind of see me doing now like that. And so that's still rubbing. I can hear it rubbing. And you have no choice but to just move it around with your hand. Quite often, and you're just looking to take the noise out of it as best as you can. Like that. And then when you know it's good, freeze <laughs> and do the bolts up yourself. Okay, so we've talked about pushing your pads back and um, retracting the pistons and doing a little bit of cleaning while you're at it to get that bit done for free. We've then talked about going on to um, aligning the caliper itself on the frame. And if those two things haven't worked, we probably now need to look at, is your rotor, the CD shaped thing, is it bent? And quite often they are. So different manufacturers make their rotors out of different materials. So um, they have a different propensities for getting warped, um, depending on who they are. So for example, Shimano, their rotors are lovely things, really, really light. They're kind of made out of sandwiches of aluminium and they like to get quite hot and change shape because of the properties of the material. Other people use pressed steel rotors. They've all got different ways of doing it, but one way or the other, they're all gonna warp eventually or get bent when you maybe drop them or put them in the boot of your car. It really doesn't take much to make them bend. And so you could chase your tail all day long uh, trying to work out why you can't realign the caliper, when in actual fact, that's not the problem you've got a bent rotor. It's doing that along its length. And the way that you'll see it, and it can be microscopic amounts, it really takes nothing at all. But the way that you'll see it is do that thing again where you're looking down through your caliper onto a light colored surface, whatever that might be. And you're looking for that equal daylight left and right of the rotor. So these are your pads and this is your rotor. And you're looking down through it like that. And if you then spin the wheel, so you do that, and you look down through it, 
and you notice, oh, hang on a minute, as that rotor's traveling, all of a sudden it's doing that. It's coming through and it's ticking one of the pads. So this, gen this gesture I'm doing with my hands, I hope it's making sense. So as it travels around like that, there'll be a point in the rotor where you notice the tiniest kick. That's what you're looking for. That's what you need this tool for. Specifically, that's what you need this end for. So there's some detective work needed here and there's good eyes needed here. So what you're looking for is to look down. You're looking to very much notice where that wave is and ask yourself, is the wave inboard or outboard? So take a few minutes to do this, have a look, spin it slowly, there's my bend. Spin it again, there's my bend. Yep, I can see it coming round each time. Yep, there it is again. Slow the wheel down, send it back the other way, verify in your head exactly where it is. Oh, okay, I've got it. It's, it's at six o'clock, whatever on the rotor. And then point to it with your finger. So literally go, that's the place there where my rotor is bent. Don't lose it because you don't really want to straighten the wrong part of a rotor that isn't bent. So get it absolutely clear in your head where that bend is. Yep, there it is. Pass it through the rotor. Yeah, it's that point there. Don't let the wheel move. Get your tool. Choose which of those slots fits the application best. So in this particular case, I'm going to use this one here. Place the tool over the rotor. And then, this bit's really important, don't be a gorilla and bend the hell out of it. The tiniest movements. Do it several times with small movements and get it right that way. And you're literally looking to just a little bit of pressure at a time. Take it off, check it. Yep, it's still bent. There's my bend there. Name it again with your finger. Find the place. Pop your tool back on again. Give it a little tiny bit more leverage. Check it again. And then when you think you've got that bend out and it really will be tiny movements, even with a, um, a steel rotor, tiny movements at a time. When you think you've got it as good as it can be, check your brake. Listen for that rubbing noise. Is it still rubbing? It's gone pretty quiet. And I think the other thing to manage here is your expectations of how straight you think you can get it. So quite often what you might find is if your rotor is badly bent and it's bent in two places, it then becomes a question of not getting it perfect, but getting it as good as it can be. Because in reality, a, a badly mangled rotor can only be trued so far they're never really going to become perfect. So what you're now looking to do is just get it to a point where you're as happy as you can be with it, but you're not chasing your tail anymore because really what you're looking to do is get it as straight as it can be so it's not destroying your brake pads and so it's not making that noise. But, it, but as I said, it's important to recognize that with a, a really bent rotor, it's very difficult to get them absolutely perfect. But with a tool like this, it is quite conceivable that you can solve this problem yourself. Okay, so that's a little bit about um, aligning hydraulic, remember, not cable, hydraulic disc brakes, and getting the um, rub out of your pads, getting the bend out of your rotors. If you've done all of those things, um, firstly, well done. Um, hopefully you've learned something today, and you've still got a problem you, you're now in the sort of area of there might be deeper issues and I would refer the problem onto a bike mechanic at this point. Specifically, the problems might be overfilled uh, hydraulic reservoirs. That's a sticky problem to get into. It might be um, that your mounting points here for the caliper aren't actually flat, um, which is a common problem and a bike shop will will do what's called facing. So they'll flatten those with the machine for you to make sure they're absolutely 90 degrees to the, uh, to the rotor. You can't really do that yourself. Um, the only other potential issue might be 
as much as you back those pads out and as much as you cleaned the pistons on the way back, you might still have a sticky seal somewhere in the caliper. It's not something that's easy to fix yourself. Some calipers aren't serviceable, some are, but I would certainly say um, if the three things we did today didn't work, you need to go and see a bike shop. Okay, I'm Jim from jimthebikeguy.com. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. And if you've liked the video today, please remember to click the little bell icon and subscribe and comment below. Thanks a lot.